the little ZV E10. I was lucky enough to pick up my Dougie back in August of 2021, and this powerhouse camera is easily the best value camera, in my opinion, for video in the mirrorless world. So uh, let's talk about it. Now, I'm not gonna say that I'm a ZV E10 expert. I mean, you can, if you want, that is your prerogative. But I will say that I have made more videos on this camera than pretty much anyone else on YouTube. So I have a lot of experience with it and I'm gonna give you my thoughts, the good and the bad. And there's a few bad, but I am gonna do some of that inside because it is freezing out. Plus, you get to see the ZV E10 in the studio where I use it a lot. So let's go. So we are back in the comfort of my studio where it is nice and warm-ish. I mean, I still live in Canada and it's the middle of the winter and I do shoot in a basement, but let's address the elephant in the room and that is the global chip shortage. Unfortunately, due to that, uh, the ZV E10 is not available most places. If you're lucky enough to grab one, do so, but they are currently not in production. Hopefully that will be resolved soon and you guys will be able to get your own little duggies. Now you may have noticed by the writing in the corner there that I am shooting on a 24 millimeter G Master and that lens is more than double the cost of the little ZV E10 and you may think that's not fair. What about the kit lens? Can you even use the kit lens? Well, yes you can. I did a whole video on how the kit lens is quite usable. So uh, let's check it out. A separation, there is some background blur here at the 3.5 and the 16 millimeters is uh, wide enough to vlog in my opinion so uh, i'll take you out to this picturesque park where they're doing uh, just tons and tons of construction they're ruining my kids park for five years but this is one of the reasons i love the little zv e10 so much it shares that e-mount so you can put fancy glass like the uh, g master 24 millimeters that you're looking at right now or you can use the kit lens or you can use something in between like the sigma trio which i love very much and made a video on each of those lenses the 16, the 30, and the 56 1.4 primes from Sigma, they turned this camera, which is already fantastic, into a beast that can compete with some of the big boys. In fact, I did a video about just that thing. The a7 IV with the fancy G Master 1.4 lens against the little ZV E10 and a Sigma 16 mm f1.4. Let's look at it. As you can see, little Dougie's punching way above his weight. And I didn't just do a video comparison. I also did some photo comparisons. Here is a team, the 56 Sigma, which I love very much. One of the sharpest lenses I have ever used. 56 Sigma against the 85 1.8 from Sony on the a7 IV. Let's take a look at that. And so now you can see the difference between the two, the difference between the colors and the depth of field. And in all honesty, I kind of prefer the colors coming out of the ZV E10 and the 56 right now. And, uh, and I'll zoom into the eyes here. And as you can see, both very sharp photos on the eyes. This is the 56 is still on your right and the 85 is on your left. Now that was pretty dang close for a portrait. You can't complain about the quality you are getting out of the ZV E10 and a portrait lens, but not just portraits. I actually have used this camera for photos a ton and uh, I took a little photo walk in one of my videos, very impressed with all of the photos that I get out of this little camera. But let's continue with the versatility. I also rigged out my little Dougie so that people would turn their heads and go, ooh, who's that guy with the big camera walking into the room? Check it out. Hi guys, check out my little Dougie. They grow up so fast. Oh, Dougie looks so handsome in uniform. I also did some low light tests where the ZV E10 just blew the iPhone 13 Pro away and it actually hung in quite admirably with the A7C. Here's a clip of that. I'm standing in the dark right now and I've turned the lights off so that sky that looks a bit blue over there that is just it's not real that is black. And what about the cinema? Can we create the cinema on my little ZV E10? Well first I ran him on a gimbal this I used the 30 millimeter from Sigma on a gimbal and I took him downtown let's check that out. Sick. 
cinematic. And lastly, and most impressively in my opinion, is that you can take this camera out vlogging. You can vlog it up handheld. All you need to do is record the gyroscopic data, which is done automatically for you, run that through Catalyst Browse, and you get footage that looks like this. Okay, now I'm at the 10 millimeter focal length, but I have enabled Catalyst Browse. So well, I've run the program through Catalyst Browse. It still just blows me away. That's on one of those Joby Gorilla things. I'm just walking around and the footage comes out so smooth that I can't believe it. So now let's quickly run through a few specs that make this $699 camera the best value in the mirrorless world, in my opinion. We have a 24 megapixel sensor, which is an older sensor, but it is a very good one. It shoots 11 frames per second in photos. That is better than my a7 IV. That's a pretty fast burst rate for raw photos out of a cheap little camera like this. 4K video is so crisp. The reason it looks so nice, aside from my genetic advantage, is that the 4K is downsampled from 6K. That's why the image looks so sharp. And also one of the reasons the image looks so good is that I use the HLG3 picture profile with a Paul Leeming corrective lot because this camera has all the picture profiles. Well, not all the picture profiles. It has doesn't have a S Cinetone, but it has S Log and it has HLG and a bunch of other picture profiles. So I would stay away from the S Logs because that's better for 10-bit cameras, but the HLG picture profiles, they grade very well with this 8-bit camera. It also includes zebras, which are very helpful for setting exposure in photos and video. It has 120 frames per second, as you saw in some of my clips, in 1080. So you get that Peter McKinnon slow motion. A lot of cameras at this price point won't give you 120 frames per second in 1080. Sometimes they give you 60, sometimes they don't give you anything. It has unlimited recording in all video modes. So as long as you have a battery and an SD card going, then the camera will just keep on recording. Has the fully articulating screen, of course, so that you can see yourself, see how handsome you look as you do your six month camera review. You need that these days. Well, at least I do. If you're sitting in front of your camera, you, that fully articulating screen is so great. It has both human and animal eye detect autofocus in video and stills. I mean, that is just crazy. You wanna take a lot of um, you know videos of your cat, which I might, want to do, then you have the cat eye autofocus. The autofocus on this camera is the best autofocus I have ever seen. It It is right up there with the a7 IV. I can't tell the difference between the two because they never fail me. They are completely reliable. I don't see how you would get a better autofocus than this system. You have the vertical video for your TikTok booty popping. You know, you wanna pop your booty, you just turn the camera sideways, there it is, there's your booty popping on the camera is just that's great it's a great little feature for people who want instagram stories or the youtube shorts or the TikToking. you know you do where you where they do songs what is it what do they do product showcase mode that is great for a lot of content creators where you just hold something up and it'll just lock on and then go away right now i want you guys locked to my face so i don't have it on and plus if i do and i talk with my hands it'll lock to my hands i don't want that but for people who want to show you know a product this product showcase mode, it works fantastically. And a little trick that Dougie has is you can actually get extra reach with your lenses using the active stabilization. It's something I do here in the studio all the time. I used to always shoot on the Sigma 16 mil F1.4, but I like about a 35 millimeter focal length full frame in this little studio. So the 16 was giving me about a 24, but when I pressed the active stabilization, it cropped in about 40% and gave me the field of view that I was really looking for. So when it comes to vlogging and holding a camera right in front of your face, that big crop might be a disadvantage, but when it comes to getting extra reach on your lenses in video, it's a great advantage and you still get full resolution. You don't lose any resolution, still a full 4K image and that is fantastic. And to go along with that, you can also use clear image zoom. Now this is a form of digital zoom, but Sony upscales it in camera and it looks quite good, then uh, you don't really notice much of a loss in resolution at all. You do lose a little, not like the crop mode. You do lose some with the clear image zoom, but it is a nice feature to have. It has a headphone port as well, not just a mic jack like some cameras, but also the headphone port for monitoring audio, which is great. It also has an intelligent hot shoe. So um, the Sony peripherals that go with that, like the Sony shotgun mic, the lavalier mic, and the XLR capsule, those are all wireless. That 
works with the little ZV E10. You can also stream just straight from the camera, USB-C, you can use it as a webcam or streaming. No other devices, no capture cards are needed. It does do that in 720. So if you want 1080 or 4K, you're just gonna wanna get a capture card and go through the HDMI as usual. But it is nice to know that you can go straight from the camera, right into your computer, right into a streaming service at 720, pretty cool. It's got the recording tally light, so you can see that the camera is recording with a red light, and also there is a red rim around the LCD screen, let you know you're recording, which is great. There are many times that I have was recording with my a7 III. Well, I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. Happened a lot of times, an embarrassing amount of times. Of course, it has the gyroscopic data that you can use for that Catalyst Browse to get that wonderful gimbal-like footage. And the price I'm going to include as well as a fantastic feature as it is $6.99. $6.99 for all of these features is absolutely fantastic in my opinion. Now, there are some things that I do not like about this camera, and I will talk about those in a second. But first, I'm gonna talk about something I do like, and that is this video sponsor, Skillshare. That's right, I have a sponsor on the Camera Crisis Channel. This is my first ever sponsor, and it was hand-picked. I am very happy that it is, in fact, Skillshare, because I actually joined Skillshare a couple of years ago when I was thinking about starting a camera channel. How do I start a camera channel on YouTube and make it work, did a few of the old Skillshare courses. Turns out it worked so well that now Skillshare is sponsoring me on the camera channel. You see, full circle, I have proof that it works. So if you don't know what Skillshare is, they're an online learning platform. So whatever you're looking for, you can probably find it. Uh, if you wanna know how to edit, they have that. Be more productive, illustrate, become a landscape photographer. Uh, well, they have that logos. I actually need that. And I am currently watching John Bromit's The Logo Design Process, and it is great. There are new premium classes launched every week, and the entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. And oddly, I have a pretty large German audience, so maybe that makes a difference to you guys. You know, even Marquez Brownlee has a course there called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, Edit with MKBHD. So go get the free trial. How could you miss what Marquez has to say? How? So, oh, you have the free trial. I should tell you what that is. The first 1,000 people to use my link will get one month free trial of Skillshare. So just try it out for free. If you don't like it, don't pay any money. Easy peasy. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. You guys rock. Now the things I don't like. Dougie, cover your ears. You're not gonna wanna hear this. You lose face and eye detect autofocus if you're doing proxy recording or if you connect a smartphone. Also, you lose it if you're outputting 30p over HDMI. Now you can get that back if you output only to HDMI, like recording to a Ninja or outputting to a capture card, but you cannot record internally in 30p while using the HDMI port without losing eye and face detect autofocus. The Zoom Rocker, that's another one I don't like because Zoom Rocker is great if you want to use clear image zoom or if you have a power zoom, but if you're not using it and you just graze that little rocker, a message comes up and it says not compatible with this lens, then you have to press another button to get that message to go away. I wish there was a way to turn that off completely. Also, no minimum shutter in auto ISO. I always like that on my cameras and especially with one that has no IBIS, which is another problem. This has no IBIS, which really hurts when it comes to photos. In video, I can use the Catalyst Browse, but in photos, I have to bump up my shutter speed and uh, it'd be nice to have some in-body image stabilization. The screen. The screen is bad. It's uh, 921,000 dots. It is not a touch screen except for tap to focus or tap to track. And it has the old Sony menus. For a camera that doesn't have an EVF, I think the screen should be better than this. In fact, it should be better no matter what. And uh, hopefully Sony will start upgrading the screens in their cameras. The a7R 4 has a good one, but everybody else could use an upgrade, especially the little uh, ZV-E10 here. Hope to see a better one next time. 
Oh, and the EVF, of course. It doesn't have an EVF. I knew that going in, but it definitely would be nice to have an electronic viewfinder when you're taking photos, especially on a sunny day, and especially because the screen is bad. The build quality. I mean, the camera feels fairly solid, but it is not weather sealed in any way, and it doesn't feel like it would handle a fall very well. So take care of your Dougie and uh, don't let him get wet. He's a bit like a gremlin and the rolling shutter. Okay, so now I don't have a problem with the rolling shutter. With the way I shoot, I put it on tripods. When I'm using Catalyst Browse, that really corrects a lot of the rolling shutter. I don't do a lot of whipping and panning, but it is a problem for some people. If you're shooting fast action things like, you know, bike races or, or NASCAR or something, things will probably look a little slanted because of the slow readout speed. And if you are moving around, not using Catalyst Browse, you're gonna see that jello-like effect. So it is something to be aware of. Personally, it doesn't affect me and the way I shoot, but it might affect you. Your mileage may vary. Okay, Dougie, you can listen again. That was just a few minor complaints that I can easily live with. You know that I love you. Now let's uh, let's end the video by sending it out to old Marky out in the alleyway. He's still out there. He's still freezing. Uh, let's let him bring this one home. This video was fun. Had a little walk down memory lane and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already because I'm going to do about a zillion more videos on the ZV-E10. The camera is so much fun to use and it's such a great value and hopefully if you don't have one already you'll get a chance to pick yours up soon. Anyway, got to go back inside now because I've been out for 13 seconds and I already have frostbite. Uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.